Hey everybody, uh, Gregor Arotero here, and I'm going to explain how I come up with the concepts for a triadic coil and the proper weaving for a rotting coil, okay? Um, this is to do with vortex mathematics. So I'm going to use go through a guide that I use to share people what I'm doing um, in a 15 minute summary. I'm going to crank that down to about 5 to explain this, and hopefully you follow along I'll use as little jargon as possible. Hopefully none. So you completely understand, because jargon just it's like speaking another language. So, let's stick to English. Bring this camera a little closer. Alright, there we go. Um, so we got the number circle, 1 through 9. Um, if you take a number in base 10 mathematics and you add them all up together, you got your quantum number. Um, so example, 29. 2 plus 9 is 11, 1 plus 1 is 2. So 29's quantum number is 2. Alright, so you're just working through numbers 1 through 9, and that's it. So, we have a number circle, instead of a number line. The first pattern that appears when you work with this type of math is the doubling sequence. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, so on. It goes on forever. It also works in reverse, with halving. So you got 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0625, and 0 0.03125, and so on. Doubling and having sequences. The most basic forms of growth and decay. And then there's this uh, trinary sequence. Um, I usually call it the trinity sequence. And 693, 396, 693. Okay? Basic three patterns we're working with. Um, I really recommend looking at other videos on the internet with Marker Run explaining this more. I'm going to be doing a presentation tonight in Portland, Maine, in public, um, that we'll be covering this much more in detail. Um, multiplication table, another thing about the multiplication table shows you the significance um, between the differences um, between the 1 through 9 numbers. Uh, 1, for example, has all 9 numbers. 2, all 9 numbers, and this is the multiplication table broken down into quantum numbers. 3, so 3, 12, 18, uh, oh, I was counting by uh, completely wrong. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. 6 is just like it, but backwards. 6, 3, 9, 6, 3, 9, 6, 3, 9. And 9 is always 9. Otherwise, your doubling sequence numbers include one of all 9 digits from 1 through 9. So it just shows you the uniqueness of 3 and 6 and 9. And there you got Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Boom. Okay. And the Fibonacci sequence... 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, you're just adding the two numbers together. But what happens when you get to 13, it becomes a 4, and 21 becomes a 3. And it shows that the Fibonacci sequence is a cyclical cycle. And within that, you have the, the same number sequences. So you got, uh, where you got 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, going in that direction. You also have 3, 3, 9, 6, 6, 9. So these are just basic patterns we're finding. And we're taking these patterns and putting them in the matrix. Now this is where I really want to get to. I just want to sum up that these three basic patterns are what we're using for some of you who are building rodent coils and not actually looking at the math. And that's an extremely quick summary. There's much more to it. Um, I recommend you dive into it. But there's those three patterns. You take those three patterns and you put them in the simplest type of matrix. And this is a 6x6 six six matrix I've been working with. And you got 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 3, 3, 9, 6, 6, 9, 2, 1, 5, 7, 8, 4. So you can say this is doubling, this is trinity, this is having. Doubling, trinity, having. Alright? Now, what you can do with these is you can wrap these maps around donuts to form something like this. And this matrix forms something just like this one right here. Alright? Which is your Star of David. And now I'm going to explain how this works in relation to physics, okay? This is a connection a lot of people don't make. Um, is extremely important. The simplest being is you have an electric field and you have a magnetic field. They're perpendicular to each other. Okay? So I'm going to turn this on to me for a second. And what you need to think about is um, you have a magnetic field influence moving in this direction. So I'm not sure. I think north is this direction in my house. So you have a north field line and a south field line. This is the magnetic field line. Well, perpendicular to me. Whoa! If I turn. Uh, I don't have room to turn. This is the electric field. There is an electric field moving around the Earth um, called the equatorial 
um, something jet stream um, that has an electric charge and it's negative at night and positive in the day, don't quote me on that, um, that moves around the earth perpendicular to the magnetic field. So, um, now you got to take that basic concept, the magnetic field being perpendicular to the electric field, and apply it to this matrix, okay? So let's go back to this, make sure. Okay. Um, and how I was thinking about that, and figured that out, because the way we've been winding these coils is we've been winding the, ma the magnetic field, in my opinion. And we've been winding this way. When I say you want to wind this way, because this is the electric field, I'm going to demonstrate that very simply. Now, the way I see it is the electric field in this, it connects in sections. So you have multiple circuits here. So this one connects to this one, connects to this one. If you make a big matrix with this all laid out, you'll see that this perpendicular pattern, these ones are only in sets of sixes, is in sets of 18. It's always in sets of 18. Um, and there's also two other matrix maps besides this, which I have right here. I can hold up really quickly. We're working with the, uh, what one are we working with? We're working with the 1-2 map right now. There's three maps this works with, and they each have 18 set patterns of oscillation. Um, each one's unique and different. This one, the 18 set pattern, counts by one. So if you can see it, it skips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then it also goes in reverse. One, two, three. Uh, there we go. Oh. One, two, three, and it comes back over here. Um, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So the electric field oscillation is counting by one. They're interwoven. Um, and there's multiple ways to interpret that, that energy is moving in both directions. So, the same thing is with this circuit, connects with this circuit, connects with this circuit. So you have two electric field oscillations. What's interesting about the 6x6 six six is that's a full 18. That's 6 times 3, that's 18. You have a full electric field oscillation. And how you can see that is over here. And I'll stick this up here. I doubt you can see it on the video. But, um... We got two, three, one, four, nine, five, eight, se six, seven, and then it goes again. Seven, six, eight, five, nine, four, one, three, two. Goes back and forth, back and forth. That's just ni nine of the eighteen numbers shown, but that they oscillate. And it's not necessarily negative. It's not necessarily positive. I just put that to demonstrate. Um, before I get ahead of myself going into this, I just wanted to also point out: if you take all these numbers and add them together, it equals one forty-four. One forty-four is a magic number in my opinion. It's the harmonic speed of light, if you ever get into harmonic math. And it's 12 times 12 is 144. It's the midpoint of the Fibonacci sequence. When I showed you that big figure 8, the 9 in the center, that's a 144. Um, you can say it's just a beautiful number. And the other thing, if you took all these numbers and add them together, say, but you label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 36, and add those numbers together, 1 through 36 together, you got 666. Six, six. Just something interesting to throw out there. Okay, so back to this electric field oscillation. Let's uh, pull up this guy right here. Now I'll add this onto the video so you can see it much better. Um, this is the electric field oscillation laid out on a triangular circuit. And what these are moving in, each one of these steps essentially, it's moving in two ninths of a step. Um, um, be going between a full positive charge, neutral charge, and a full negative charge. And so the 9, you can tell the 9, 9 is a neutral charge. These two are neutral charges. Okay? If you also notice, the 9 um, is lined up with the 9 around the torus, which you'll see on here. Um, and what I mean by that is, where we got a 9? Um, let's say this one here is a 9, so this is a zero balanced charge. That means this opposing circuit is also going to be a balanced charge. Um, these sort of circuits move together. So as this one passes this one, this one goes down this one. They sort of leapfrog back and forth. But they always stay next to each other. Um, and really how to imagine this, if you see my video on the yin-yang circuit, say these are, as in this little graphic, these are two positive charges, these are two negative charges, and they swing together. 
And so you have your negative charges with the positive charge formed in the middle. Um, because anytime you have two negative charges in ether, a positive charge will form in the middle. This is your yin yang. Um, and that's what sustains this resonance and sustains this resonance. And the whole circuit then is even a more sustained resonance with all the capacitance or the energies feeding off each other, opposing energies feeding off each other. Um, that's what capacitance essentially is in terms of creating stability with the charges. So, say we got, we got the zeros here. These are your actual nines. And this positive one, negative one, would be nine ninths, po nine ninths negative, nine ninths positive. The thing is, the negative eight ninths would represent your double numbers. Where's your double numbers? You've got sevens. So you'd say this is negative eight ninths, this is negative eight ninths. Your in between is your full charge. So this is negative eight ninths, negative uh, six ninths, or negative two thirds, negative four ninths, um, yep. And this would be negative two ninths, zero, then two ninths, four ninths, six ninths, nine ninths. And two and you got the twos, double twos being in between. The same goes for the other two maps. It's in between the double numbers that the positive and negative charge will be. Um, this is to looking at the firing sequence though with a triangular wave. We're just pulling these wires straight through. We want to Add curvature to them if you want to make a sine wave. Otherwise, it's just a triangular wave. This would be your sine wave. Um, and this is how I wound my 3D vortex model, is it with this type of mapping sequence. And this shows the edges of the coil um, with this sequence going around it. And if you can see, you got two sixes, two nines, two threes, two threes, two nines, two sixes. Essentially, what basically you could say this is, you could say this is a uh, rising neutral, rising positive, falling positive, falling neutral, uh, falling negative, rising negative. And it's cycling between all six of those states. Alright. What do we got here? I got... Okay. Now what's really cool about the triadic coil is it's set up to go into fractals. Now if I can hold this close, um, it's set up to go into fractals. And so what I mean by this, if this is a positive charge right here, this tip point is a positive charge in the circuit, all right, you'd have a dielectric or insulator in between the, those two, and then on this circuit this would be a negative charge. And so if you just use these colors even though this is the best way to um, show this, it shows you can create fractal structure between the positive and negative charges and how the coils can feed off each other. Um, and then what you can do is you can take that a step up and completely enclose the circuit in something like this. So we have an octahedron coil that I made a while back. Um, but let's say imagine this with this little guy here, okay? Um, you can stick each of them like so around. Each each one is going to have three neighbors contacting it, and you basically enclose your resident system within a one perfect system. I don't know how to say it. It's a completely enclosed system. All right, and that's what's really cool about the Star of David is you can create fractal structures of it. So let's go on to another one.